Saving money. It's hard enough as it is, but to do it in another country? Man, that's even harder. You don't know the language, you're out of your comfort zone, which also makes it harder to make decisions. Which is why today I'll be sharing my tips for saving money, especially in Japan. Let's go. So, just to give some background, I moved to Japan 4 years ago to start my very first job and my starting salary was around 2.8 million yen, which is around 27,000 US dollars. It's not the worst, but it's also not the best. And I think a lot of people come to Japan with similar situations. But I never felt like I was ever short of money because I always had good spending habits since college. And one of the things I really wanted to do when I moved to Japan was to travel as much as I can. And within that first year, I was able to travel to so many different places. China, Korea, Bali, Taiwan, Osaka, Nagano. I was practically traveling once every like one or two months. So if I can save money, then you can too. So the first tip is to learn how you're spending your money aka categorize your costs. I feel like saving money has less to do with how much you make and more to do with how much you spend. So I categorize my costs into two big groups, necessity and luxury. So necessity is spending on things you absolutely need to spend on. It's clothes, food, rent, furniture, dental appointments, basically things you need to survive. And leisure is spending on things you don't absolutely need. It could be games, travel, entertainment, alcohol, basically things you can live without. And within both necessities and leisures, you can categorize your spendings even further into basic and luxury. For example, food is a necessity, but there's a choice of making your own food and eating out. Alcohol is a leisure. And within alcohol, you can either get the super fancy cocktail for like $20 at a bar or just get wasted on Strong Zero. Another example could be getting used furniture instead of buying new ones or drinking normal bottle tea instead of tapioca or by making your own coffee instead of buying the bottled ones at the convenience store. So within both necessity and leisure spending, by making the active choice to go with the basic option rather than the luxury option, you'll be able to save a lot more money. Another important mindset is money is a balance between time and comfort. Basically what I'm trying to say is that in order to save money, you'll have to be willing to sacrifice your time or your comfort. For example, taking the bus instead of the Shinkansen, walking home versus taking the train home, and cooking a meal versus eating out. In all these situations, there's a balance between your money and your time or comfort. If you want to save money, think about where you can balance these out. So those are two kind of principles that I usually keep in mind when I try to save money. And now I'll be giving you some actionable tips to actually save money. Tip number one is don't go to the convenience store. You first come to Japan, you walk into like a family mart, and you see like all these items, you know, like very affordable, 100 yen, 400 yen, and they may seem cheap, but in reality, they're actually not. They're actually just packaged less with a smaller price tag because the convenience store is meant for convenience rather than value. So my advice is don't go to the convenience store and instead go to the supermarket and buy in bulk. You get much more value for your money and you'll be amazed how much you save just by quitting the convenience store. It's like an addiction. Tip number two is if you use your AC slash heater, then keep it on all the time. This may sound counterintuitive, but there's a mode in there called Jido mode or automated mode. And what happens is that if it's on this mode, then it brings your room to a certain temperature and then it turns off. And it only turns back on in order to continually maintain that temperature. And by maintaining that temperature, instead of cooling or heating your room every single time, you're able to save a lot more money. And to further reduce your electricity bill, you can insulate your home. When it comes to insulation, Japanese homes aren't the best, but there are things you can do to further improve the insulation. For example, you can paste bubble wrap onto your windows. If your home has a vent fan, then you can cover it up, and you can put styrofoam on your doors and windows to help seal the crevice. Something like this. 
Next tip is to cook your own food. This is especially hard in Japan because one, there's convenience stores and restaurants everywhere you go. Two, most homes don't come with a proper kitchen, like mine. And three, grocery is quite expensive in Japan. But despite all of this, cooking can still make a difference in your wallet. You'll be surprised how much you can save just by cooking. My first year living here, I used to eat curry like almost like every other day in order to save money to travel. And you can also buy Tupperware so you can bring it to work or school or anywhere outside your house. Next tip is to invest in a bicycle. This year I bought a bicycle and started commuting with a bicycle instead of taking a train. Just a warning, if you live in a big city or near a big station, you actually have to pay for bike parking. But despite that, I was still able to save money. I only have to take one train to work. It costs about 260 yen round trip if I take the train. And if I ride my bike, it's about 100 yen for parking. So yeah, with just that, I'm able to save 160 yen per day. But if there's a transfer, it can cost double the amount. So around 520 yen per trip. And if the bike parking is still the same, then you're able to save 420 yen, which is a much bigger saving. But with that being said, if your commute is really, really far, then of course a bike wouldn't be practical. But yeah, for some cases, I think it'll really, really help save money. Next tip is points, points, points. Lately, points have become a trend and there's a lot of different point systems out there. There's a T point card, the D point card, the rocks 10 points, the Ponta. But yeah, many different point systems out there. While it may be kind of tedious to have to show your point card every time, it's quite a money saver. In times when I didn't have enough cash, I would use my points instead. But yeah, if you want to take your point game to the next level, then I highly recommend getting a credit card. And two years ago, I made a credit card which gives me Suica points every single time. Suica is basically the transportation card, but you can use it in many different places like convenience store, supermarket, restaurants. And every time I charge my Suica with that credit card, I get back Suica points. So I get even more money back. Sometimes I'll get back like 10,000 yen in just about one month. Maybe I'll do a video on what type of credit cards to get. If you'd like to see that, then let me know in the comments. Next tip, when traveling domestic, take the bus. So there's three main transportations in Japan, plane, bus, and Shinkansen. The Shinkansen is usually the most comfortable and the fastest, but it's also the most expensive. The bus is the most uncomfortable and the slowest, but it's also the cheapest. And plane is about right in the middle, I guess. But yeah, like I mentioned before with money versus time or comfort, by traveling with a bus rather than a plane or Shinkansen, you'll be able to save a lot more money, which is how I did all my travels in my first year. So yeah, my next and final tip is to create a second bank account. But yeah, making a bank account shouldn't be too hard in Japan. Having a second bank account just for savings can make a huge, huge difference. So I would get paid every single month on the 15th and what I would do on that day is if I had any money left over from the previous payday, I would transfer it to the second account and never touch that money. That way by taking that extra money out of your site every single month, someday it'll grow to be a very huge sum. It'll help you mentally organize your finances and prevent you from spending that money. But yeah, those are my tips for saving money in Japan. And here are a couple places to shop affordably. For everyday life stuff, you can go to a 100 yen shop such as Daiso, Seria, Kandu. For food and groceries, I found Seiyu to be quite cheap. And for buying meat in bulk, I usually go to a place called Hanamasa. And for buying other foods in bulk, I go to a place called Gyomu Super. And for buying clothes, many people consider Uniqlo to be one of the cheaper places. But there's actually another even cheaper place called GU. And they have quite a lot of good stuff. So yeah, I highly recommend checking out GU before checking out Uniqlo. And for pretty much anything else, you can go to Don Quixote or order from Amazon. So yeah, that was it for today's video. I hope you're able to get something out of this. And if you did, make sure to let me know by liking this video. And if you'd like to see more Japan tips and travel related content, then make sure to subscribe. Alright, that was it and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!